Several months ago, I asked my viewers if when I had multiple ammos from the same country but different years, for example, I've had Greek ammo from 1938, 1939, and 1940, if they wanted to see that broken up into multiple different videos or if they wanted all of those grouped together. Almost unanimously, people said that they wanted those in different videos, and there are multiple advantages to that. However, another advantage is that it gives me the option of improving the videos I produce over time. My fifth video on this channel is Romanian ammo from Factory 22 made in 1973. The ammo I'm testing today is Romanian ammo from Factory 22 made in 1975. Romanian 8mm Mauser from 1975. Sometimes steel rounds just have a hard time stripping into the magazine from the stripper clips, a little bit harder than brass case rounds. Two thousand five hundred nineteen. Two thousand three hundred sixty-six. And that might have been uh, more just an issue of the chronograph, so we might throw out that number when we calculate. 2,558. 2,448. 2,460. 2,520. The case fell back into the chamber. 2,000, there we go. 2,531. 2,612. 2,517. 2,432. So that was our time on the range. Our velocity results were really interesting. Our velocity low was 2,432 and a high of 2,612. That gave us a spread of 180 feet per second from the lowest to the highest and an average of 2,511. Those are very, very low velocities, which is interesting. Our next lowest is the Romanian ammo from 1973, and it gave us an average velocity of 2,700, so almost 200 feet per second higher than our ammo we tested today. That's really slow ammo, and that almost makes me want to reshoot this ammo because I did have a little bit left. It ain't cheap being an 8mm Mauser man, and it ain't easy to have this much drip. That's why I'd like to tell you about three ways that you can support this channel. Number one is all the YouTube stuff. Like, comment, subscribe. You already know the drill. It tells YouTube that this is the content you want to see, and it gives me a warm, fuzzy feeling inside. Second, we have three awesome stickers available for purchase. Simply send $5 to the Venmo in the description, and in What's This For, be sure to include the term Retro, Logo, or Subscribed, so that I send you the right one, along with your address. You can also send your address to the email in the description if that makes you feel safer. Third, in the description there is a link to Player. Player is like YouTube and Patreon put together, but they don't take as much of your money, so it goes to supporting the content that you want to see. Finally, I'd like to add that 20% of all of the money that comes into this channel goes to supporting Rafa International, an organization that helps fight sex trafficking worldwide. Enjoy the rest of the video. I'm not doing that yet, and one of the reasons for that is that this day I tested I think 7 to 10, I can't remember the exact number, different 8mm Mauser ammos, and I've made a few videos featuring those ammos. None of those other ammos I've looked at have had numbers that were out of the ordinary, especially not this far out of the ordinary. So this is just really strange, and I think because it's so strange, it's something that we're maybe going to look back at later. Romanian ammunition from the 1970s is going to come packaged in two different ways. 
Both are inside of spam cans. But the difference is, one of them is on stripper clips, like this one here. So the stripper clip ones will be, it'll be five in a stripper clip, not four. I just had one pulled out from my display. But there'll be four in a stripper clip and 20 in a box, like that. The other way is not on stripper clips. And those will be like this with the cartridges back and forth. Now you can tell which it is from the outside because the ones not on stripper clips are a little bit narrower than the ones that are on stripper clips. This box is a little deformed, but you can kind of tell there uh, based on that side right there. So the ammunition we're looking at today is the ones not on stripper clips from 1975. So they are from 1975. Uh, the base has on the head stamp 22 and 75. The boxes on these are unmarked. The markings would be on the spam cans, not on the boxes. Something else to talk about about this Romanian ammunition is that the case is usually just a little bit shorter than other eight millimeter Mauser. Now it's still head stamps on the neck, so you don't really have to worry about this being a headspace issue. The case itself is a little bit shorter. Like many nations, Romania utilized factory codes with the head stamps on their ammunition. If you go to war with another nation, they won't be able to figure out exactly where your ammunition is being produced because they won't see the address of it on the back of the head stamp. Instead, they'll see number 22 and they might not know what number 22 means. That number or that name is reserved for people who actually work in the factory who are putting the stamps on it and they should be the only people who really know. Factory 22 has two different names you might see it go by. I believe it changed in 1948, and before 1948, it was Pyrotechnia Armite, which means Army Pyrotechnics, and then after 1948, it's called Usina Mechanica, which just means Mechanical Plant Sadu. This ammunition was produced from 1972 to 1977. By this point, Romania had phased out all of their VZ-24 Czech rifles that they used during World War II, for comblock rifles that would have been chambered in 7.62x54R or 7.62x39. So because their weapons in this round had been phased out, why were they making it? And nobody really has a perfect idea, however there are some theories. My personal theory is that they might have kept those 7.92 or 8mm Mauser rifles in a stockpile warehouse somewhere, so they wanted to be able to grab them if they needed them, and if they needed them they would also need ammunition. So just kind of as a backup in case they needed it, that was why they still wanted to have some ammo on hand. However, another prevailing theory is that, is that this ammo was made specifically for export, either to foreign militaries or it was made to export to foreign commercial markets. The thing that leads me away from this idea is that the um, spam cans are labeled in Romanian, and if you were going to make this ammo for export, you probably wouldn't label the ammo in Romanian. You'd do what a lot of other countries do and label it in a more common language like English or French, maybe Russian. The case of these cartridges is about one millimeter shorter. Some people will call this 7.92 by 56 instead of 7.92 by 57. Now, since it's just the neck of the case that's a little bit shorter and the shoulder is still in the same place, you don't have any issues shooting it in a standard eight millimeter Mauser rifle. It's just an oddity of this ammo. Some people have said that the purpose of that is for better feeding in things like machine guns or auto loaders where you can just have that slightly shorter case as it's ejecting. I don't really know exactly why, and I don't think anybody really does. There's just that one theory. These are just normal full metal jacket boat tailed projectiles. The crimp is right here, and you'll notice that red line. That red line is a sealant that goes around the bullet right there just to hold out the elements. It's also on the primer. Also, these rounds are magnetic, but they're not armor piercing. It's a mild steel core. Our bullet weight low is 152.4, and our bullet weight high is 155.7. So that gives us a spread of 3.3 grains from the lowest bullet to the highest bullet, and an average of 154.5. Funny thing is, the ammo from 1973 had a bullet weight of 154.6, so the bullets are very consistent in their averages. However, this is one of the widest spreads for bullet weights of any of the ammos I have ever tested. This ammo, let's just say, is not known for its consistency. And that shows here. This Romanian ammo uses a normal extruded powder, as you can see right here. I've sometimes called this cylindrical powder in the past, but the actual name is ex extruded powder. Our powder weight low is 48.7, and our powder weight high is 49.8. 
So that gives us a spread of 1.1 grains from the lowest to the highest, and an average of 49.32 grains. For the spread, it's about what we'd expect. It's actually pretty good. However, for the weight, it is four grains higher than the ammunition from uh, 1973. So it's interesting that the powder is greater, however, the velocity is lower. Now, factories will frequently change their powder from year to year, so sometimes you'll see powder from the same ammunition factory just during different years, and it's a different even type of powder. So the fact that the powder had a different burn rate isn't really something that we should cause alarm. As for my opinion, this ammo is good to go. I don't really have much to say on it. This ammunition is renowned for being some of the best surplus currently on the market. And that's not because it's particularly good, it's just because most of the surplus that's left is not particularly good. It's known for being relatively inaccurate, but still being able to shoot good enough for plinking, and as long as you're not trying to shoot in any competitions, you'll be fine, which if you're shooting 8mm Mauser in a competition, you are the kind of man I want to hang out with. This ammunition is going to be very much definitely corrosive. I've shot this, and then uh, especially the ammo from 19... Uh, 73, and then I had it in my bag where I keep all my brass cases, and I've noticed there is rust on the inside of the cases after a while, and that's because it's corrosive ammo, and it's attracting the humidity out of the air. This ammunition is definitely reliable. You can still find it in the spam cans, and it is a good quality. So you will be able to find this ammo pretty readily available. I'm pretty sure you could find it right now online if you were looking, However, it will be a little bit more expensive than some other ammo, like Greek ammo or Turkish ammo that can be found plentifully right now. I think it's higher quality. I think if you buy a spam can, it's going to last longer. But the downside is that it is not necessarily the most accurate. All of that being said, I am 8mm Mauser Man, and I fired Romanian ammo from 1975, but I lived on. Which proves... It's hard to get the best of a man named John. Yeah.